Order. If there are no further points of order, I think we come now to the select committee statement. Colleagues, <laughs> Mr Clive Betts will speak on his subject for up to ten minutes, during which I remind the House no interventions may be taken. At the conclusion of his statement, the Chair will call members to put questions on the subject of the statement and call Mr Clive Betts to respond to these in turn. Members can expect to be called only once. Interventions should be questions and should be brief. The front bench may take part in questioning. I call colleagues the Chair of the Housing, Communities and Local Government Select Committee. Yeah, Mr yeah. Clive Betts. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. First of all, could I thank the Backbench Business Committee for making time for this statement. Um, last Tuesday, the um, committee published our 12th report of this session following a six-month inquiry into leasehold reform. I'd like to thank all members of the committee who agreed the report unanimously, and several of them are in their places uh, today, uh, particularly to thank also Nick Taylor, our committee specialist, for his excellent work on this technically challenging subject. We're grateful, uh, Mr. Sp uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, in particular for the work over many years of the ABBG on leasehold reform, which helped to highlight the multitude of issues of concern amongst leaseholders. It was extremely helpful to have public evidence from the joint chairs uh, of the group, the Honourable Member for Worthing West, who I see in this place today, my Honourable Friend, the Member for Poplar and Limehouse, and I also see in this place uh, the Honourable Member for uh, Ellesmere Port uh, as well. We also had written evidence from uh, my Honourable Friend, the Member for um, uh, Weaver Vale, who during his time on the committee strongly advocated for this inquiry, he's in his place as well, and from my Honourable Friends, the Members for Brent North, uh, Felderman Heston, who's in her place, uh, and Manchester Central, and the Honourable Member for Pendle. The committee has never undertaken an inquiry that has had such an overwhelming response from individual members of the public. We received over 700 written submissions, mostly from leaseholders who wanted to tell us about their personal experiences. It's clear there's a great deal of dissatisfaction. Onerous ground rent terms, high and opaque service charges, unfair and excessive permission charges, alleged mis-selling of leasehold properties by developers, imbalanced dispute mechanisms and unreasonable costs to enfranchise or extend leases. In the worst cases, people have been left trapped in unsellable homes. More common are leaseholders with opaque service charges and poor levels of maintenance, with no reasonable means to challenge or query how their buildings are being managed. The committee concluded that too often leaseholders have been treated by developers, freeholders and managing agents, not as homeowners or customers, but as a source of steady profit. At the very start of our inquiry into leasehold reform, we invited 50 leaseholders to meet us in Parliament to talk about the issues they were most concerned about. We listened carefully to their concerns, and at the end of the session we asked what they wanted us to recommend in our final report. And they responded nearly unanimously, abolish leasehold. Yeah. Yeah. We listened. Leasehold is an inappropriate tenure for houses, and we support the Government's proposals to prohibit leasehold development of new build houses. With regard to flats, we are unconvinced that professional freeholders provide a significantly higher level of service than that which could be provided by leaseholders themselves. Yeah, yeah. There is no reason why the vast majority could not be held in common hold. Only the most complex mixed-use developments and some retirement properties may continue to benefit from some form of leasehold ownership. We call on the Government to ensure that common hold becomes a primary model of ownership of flats in England and Wales, yeah. as it is in many other countries and to create the incentives and remove the disincentives for developers and freeholders to ensure that this happens. While it is right to consider tenure for the future, much of our evidence was from existing leaseholders who want their concerns addressing now. During our inquiry, we heard several accusations from leaseholders, particularly of houses, that they had been missold their properties. Of particular concern from a substantial number were accusing developers of reneging on promises made by their sales teams to allow leaseholders to purchase their freeholds at an agreed price after two years. Leaseholders told us their freeholds had been sold on to third party investors who were not willing to allow leaseholders to purchase their freeholds at the same price as previously offered. One leaseholder told us the price of purchasing her freehold had increased from £3,000 to £13,000 or another from £5,000 to £40,000. 
Developers denied they had deliberately misled leaseholders, but the number of near-identical stories reflects a serious cross-market failure. We have called on the Competition and Markets Authority to investigate mis-selling in the leasehold sector and make recommendations for compensation. We know the Secretary of State has already called on the CMA to do this, and they have refused. We hope our call will act to the pressure on the CMA to finally act in the interest of leaseholders. It was concerning to hear several reports from leaseholders that they have been advised, incentivised or required by the developer to use a specific <coughs> conveyancing solicitor, who subsequently did not advise them of onerous terms in their leases. We heard that developers had offered free carpets, free lawns, discounts or other financial incentives to use a preferred solicitor. Leaseholders were told their sale would fall through if they didn't complete within 28 days and only the developer recommended solicitor could be certain to hit the deadline. Consumers must be able to access independent and, reasonable, uh, re and reliable legal advice when purchasing a property. That's why we have called on the government to prohibit the offering of financial incentives to persuade a customer to use a particular solicitor. Concerns were made over owners' ground rents. Ground rents bear no relation to the level of maintenance or quality of service provided to leaseholders. That's a function of the service charge. Some developers had imposed 10 to 15 year doubling ground rent terms in the leases of new built flats and houses. Taylor Wimpy have apologised and set up a remediation scheme, albeit with limitations. Others have not. Redrow told us they had introduced 10 year doubling ground rents on 347 properties with an average starting ground rent of £400 per annum, which would rise to £12,800 in the 50th year. They have no plans to remedy these leases. There is a growing trend for mortgage lenders to refuse to lend on leasehold properties, where the ground rents exceed 0.1% or will exceed the value of, that of the property in the future. The options for leaseholders with owners' ground rents are limited. We are not convinced by voluntary offers, so what more could be done? One option is to use legislation to amend existing leases. The Government told us initially that they were not able to use legislation in these circumstances and the Secretary of State said the nature of contract law means legislation cannot change the terms of leases already signed. But we found that it would be legally possible for the Government to introduce legislation to remove onerous ground rents in existing leases and retrospective legislation could be compliant with human rights law. Indeed, the Government proposes to reduce the premium payable to enfranchise, effectively buying freeholders out of a contractual income stream, stream at a discount. There is little difference in principle between altering the terms of enfranchisement and altering ground rents, and in both are likely to be equally justifiable in human rights terms. Freeholders will probably need to be compensated, but that compensation need not necessarily be full value. Our view is that existing ground rents should be limited to 0.1% of present value of a property, up to a maximum of £250 per year. On future leases, the Government originally said it would require those to be set at a peppercorn of zero financial value, but has since proposing making £10 per annum a standard cap. It is, however, unclear what value there is for leaseholder or freeholder in requiring a ground rent of £10. We therefore recommend that the Government revert to its original plan and require ground rents on newly established leases to be set at a peppercorn or zero financial value. While it is fair that lease freeholders should be able to pass on reliable costs arising, so reasonable costs arising from a change initiated by a leaseholder, many of the permission fees we heard about were plainly excessive and exploitative. £3,500 for permission to build a conservatory? You know, you know, actually charges to fit a new doorbell. These are clearly <coughs> ridiculous. We have called for permission fees to be limited to the true administrative costs incurred by freeholders. The Government should require this in the lease of new built properties, <coughs> while legislation should be introduced to restrict such fees in existing leases. Further, the growing practice of imposing permission fees in the deeds of new built freehold properties and enfranchised former leasehold properties is an unjustified intrusion upon homeowners which many campaigners have rightly referred to as fleecehold. We have made recommendations to deal with fleecehold, including the Government should require that permission fees are only ever included in the deeds of freehold properties where they are reasonable and absolutely necessary, although we noted that we cannot think of any circumstances in which this would be the case. We have also called on the Competition and Markets Authority to exercise its powers under Section 130A of the Enterprise Act 2002 to indicate its view as to whether onerous leasehold terms 
constitute unfair terms and would therefore be unenforceable. Where leaseholders have paid unreasonable fees or ground rents over the course of their leases so far, they should have those refunded by freeholders with interest. Mr Deputy Speaker, our report has made many other recommendations and we welcome in particular the work being done by the Law Commission on a number of matters such as enfranchisement, common hold and other matters. But what we feel is necessary is not simply a, a number of individual recommendations, but the Government now should call on the Law Commission to and invite them and fund them to conduct a more comprehensive review of leasehold legislation as a whole. We have made many other recommendations, which I have not got the time to go into uh, today, Mr Deputy Speaker, but we do look forward to the Government's response to our report and urge Ministers, given the weight of evidence we had from so many individual people, our constituents up and down the country, to take our recommendations seriously. Sir Peter Bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Can I first say that I own a leasehold flat and in a few years' time I may own another one, but I haven't had any problems. Can I say to the House that the Chairman of the Select Committee and his colleagues and advisers deserve enormous thanks and congratulations. In a matter of three months, they've had the innovation of the round table, and the conclusion of that round table I recommend to the BBC and others who don't yet seem to have covered the detail of the report. He's picked up on the issues put forward by the National Leaseholders Campaign, picked up on the knowledge of Bob Bessel, one of the trustees of Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, who has developed over 1,500 retirement properties with no ground rents at all, because he knows, and we all know, ground rents pay for nothing of benefit to those who are in their homes. Can I say to the Chairman that putting forward the suggestion of lease rental is one of the good suggestions in the report, that leaseholders don't think they actually own anything yet, because they don't. They are, in effect, are tenants, and as we have seen in the grenfell style cladding, they're the ones left carrying the cost of doing the cladding, or supposedly, and that wasn't good enough. Can I welcome, on behalf of uh, those who come to the all-party group, the campaign to make sure that costs uh, become equal and that freeholders should not be able to put the costs of their unsuccessful legal actions on leaseholders who find time to pay even though they've won a dispute. Yeah. It's very important that all the recommendations of the report are debated in full in this House and can I say that if we can have more reports like this, those of us who have campaigned, and particularly the Honourable Member for uh, El Ellsworth Port and his yeah. colleague, the, right, the Honourable Member for uh, Limehouse of Poplar, who is actually at a major leaseholders meeting at the moment and would otherwise speak, that their work and our work is carried through to the benefit of leaseholders. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, very briefly, the, the point about uh, 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 legal, legal action and the cost of that not being recoverable from leaseholders is made uh, as a recommendation in our report. Uh, I, I very much welcome the idea of, of a longer debate on this, perhaps when the government's given their response and we can take into account that. Uh, yes, uh, the idea of lease rental is one perhaps we ought to pursue a bit more clearly because people don't wholly own their properties in the way they think they do. Dr David Drew. Mr Deputy Speaker, I mean, my honourable friend knows I'm particularly concerned about older people who've been somewhat duped into these schemes. Would he agree with me that this is something that the Competition and Marketing Authority could look at very quickly so we deal with those particular problems in the sheltered sector? Would he agree with that? Yes, we've we called for an investigation into mis-selling. The government's called for it as well. Let's hope between us we can actually get that done, uh, and particularly for older people who may not have uh, understood as well perhaps some of the very difficult complications around those sorts of properties. Bob Black. Thank you. Mr Deputy Speaker, I congratulate my, I can call him my honorary friend, uh, for uh, his chairmanship of the Housing Committee's Local Government Select Committee and in steering us towards this excellent report, which I was pleased to participate in. Can I just draw one point that he was unable in his time frame to draw attention to? And that is the absolute scandal of people like Belway, who sell the freeholds of properties to financial companies yeah. two years after they've built them without even notifying the leaseholders at all. Can, can, can I urge my honourable friend to, to urge the government to close this legal loophole uh, that, that would, uh, allows companies like this to do this to subsidiaries or other organisations without even notifying uh, uh, leaseholders and to ensure that leaseholders can buy the freehold at the same price 
that they would pay or that would be paid by by any subsidiary. Absolutely, it is a complete scandal, and uh, we got admission from a number of developers. That's what they did, quite blatantly. Sold it on, didn't tell the uh, the leaseholders it was being done. So uh, ultimately, um, banning new uh, houses being built uh, as leasehold solves the problem. But immediately, uh, I think there ought to be a right of first refusal um, for um, for leaseholders to buy their freehold, uh, and that that price ought to be a, a, a clearer, a clearer, and more regulated price. And the local commission is doing work on that, which we support. Uh, thank you, yeah, Deputy yeah. Speaker. On, uh, on behalf of the National Leasehold Campaign, can I congratulate the Chair and the whole Committee on uh, what is an excellent, uh, very comprehensive report. Um, I think there's a sense of vindication from uh, all those who have been campaigning on these issues, not least myself, the National Leasehold Campaign, my honourable friend, the member for Irving Western, the honourable member for Popper and Limehouse, because uh, the committee have really picked up on all of the issues that have been of, of great concern to us. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, when considering the report, the government will note that there is still a private member's bill on the books to make a very uh, simple and easy uh, process of enfranchisement. Uh, one issue I'd like the um, Chair to comment on, though, is uh, whether uh, they, the, the Committee came to any view on um, the uh, agreements that have been reached between some developers and, and uh, leaseholders for changing the uh, terms of their lease from uh, doubling to RPI. Uh, I think we, we, we did. We said that these voluntary agreements were maybe a step forward, but were not sufficient. Uh, and in particular, uh, they, they weren't as good as our proposals to restrict uh, leases on existing properties to 0.1% of the value or £250. And legislation would actually uh, over, uh, overturn that arrangement and make a better one uh, for leaseholders. Andrew Shalhoub. This uh, scandal of uh, new houses being sold often to first-time buyers on leases is present in my constituency in Dunstable and Leighton Buzzard from builders like Galliford Tri, trading as Linden Homes, Taylor, uh, Woodrow and Persimmon. Um, I'm really concerned about how we get a speedy and affordable redress for people caught in this situation, including those Taylor Woodrow um, victims who are not the original purchasers, for whom Taylor Woodrow are offering nothing. Now, I note in the report that the Law Commission are not due to re uh, pro provide their final report until later in 2019, and the committee recommends implementation within 12 months. This cannot come a day too soon. This was a scandal. It never should have been allowed to happen. And I do say to my good friend on the front bench, we need urgent action, please. Well, is absolutely right for how some of these developers have behaved. Uh, you know, hopefully, action will follow quickly from the Law Commission's report. Uh, I think the committee will be keeping an eye on this and pressing for it, as I'm sure uh, other honourable members will. And of course, we have to keep reminding ourselves that these companies who have done this are hardly hard up, are they? Uh, you know, um, t t Taylor Woodrow, £800 million, uh, pounds, uh, uh, persimmon, a billion pound profits in the last financial year. Uh, they're not relying on this money to, to, to keep themselves afloat. <laughs> Mr Deputy Speaker, and apologies for standing up too soon. Just, just when you begin to think you know what you're doing, you realise you really <laughs> don't. Um, can I congratulate um, the Select Committee and the Chair and all the members for a really excellent report and also congratulate the, the all-party group on, on leasehold reform, the work of the member uh, uh, for Ellesmere, Port and, Port and Neston as well, and, and, and the cross-party consensus that you've managed to uh, deliver. I think the need for reform is, is very clear. Um, I wondered if the Chair of the Committee agrees with me that following the Law Commission's um, detailed work into enfranchisement, it's important for leaseholders that a simple formula is set for people to buy their freehold of their home, either based on a multiple of ground rent or a percentage of capital value of the property. I think we do need something simpler, but I think the Law Commission has been asked to do it because maybe something as simple as a multiple of ground rent won't be fair. If you think about it, uh, the, the, the freeholders will get the, the, the biggest benefit from a multiple of ground rent will be the ones who put the largest ground rent charges in, uh, and that would actually be that would be a perverse uh, benefit to ones who behaved worst in, in this situation. So I, I, I think we want the, the Law Commission to report as quickly as possible with something as simple as possible, but one which is not merely really simple but fair as well. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs> Speaker. Can I also um, welcome and, and thank 
uh, the Select Committee for this leasehold reform report, uh, long overdue. Um, in my constituency, I have a particular issue with um, elderly constituents who have moved into independent living blocks and then found that their asset is depreciated hugely because it's not being managed, not being looked after, and the service charges just keep going up and up. And of course, they can't afford to leave. They are trapped, and something needs to be done to help these most vulnerable uh, of our constituents. Can I ask in particular, it seems to me that we need to open up the market when it comes to these management uh, service companies. Did the Select Committee look uh, to see whether it would be possible to allow leaseholders to actually set up their own community interest companies so that they can actually take on the responsibilities themselves and they're not going to rip themselves off as they currently are be, being by some of these unscrupulous uh, companies? There are circumstances when, when leaseholders uh, can do that. And of course, ultimately, in, in many circumstances, a leaseholder could move to a form of common hold, but it needs uh, a substantial agreement amongst the leaseholders themselves. And many probably elderly leaseholders want to go down that road uh, uh, without, without lots of explanation and help. And one of our concerns was there wasn't much help or publicity around that, that whole process. That's something that could be looked at. But in, just in terms also of the service charges, uh, very often uh, these are terribly opaque, proper information isn't given, the right to challenge isn't explained, uh, and, and the, the challenge through the, the tribunal uh, is very, very difficult. So another thing that could help in this process is a much simpler housing court system, which we, we hear from the government they're going to introduce. The quicker they do that, the better as well. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. May I also congratulate my honourable friend and his committee for this report, which is incredibly <coughs> hard-hitting, in which constituents like uh, Pamela Rose Canales in my constituency and Camellia House residents who contributed evidence, I know, have also greatly appreciated. Mr Deputy Speaker, I do believe that this report is a game-changer. This has been an issue that has been bubbling in uh, many ways in this House, and, uh, and I think it's, we've got a real opportunity now to... Uh, fundamentally review and change the legislation in this area. Could I pick up on just three very brief um, recommendations he's made uh, as to how quickly he thinks some of these matters could be taken forward? The first being the um, uh, prevention of the ability of uh, landlords to recoup um, their uh, legal fees uh, from those who lose, uh, from those against whom they lose the cases. Um, secondly, um, in my experience, the service charge and paying a service charge hasn't been the issue. People are happy to pay a fair service charge. As he says, it has been a lack of transparency and justification um, and the unpredictable nature of additional charges that may just appear sometime through the year and how quickly we may be able to see some of those changes also come in, perhaps with the housing court that he uh, has also mentioned there. And finally, could, um, uh, could he... Uh, perhaps answer how quickly he thinks that the Law Commission um, could be um, uh, asked by the government to undertake the comprehensive review that he rightly refers to, bearing in mind that this can take 12 to 18 months to see through and we want to see uh, this legislative, these legislative changes moved on as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank yeah, uh, on, the, on the first point, um, if, if um, a leaseholder going to the tribunal asks at the beginning um, for a ruling that if they win, costs can't be passed on to them for the freeholder, the tribunal can so rule. Uh, the problem is that many leaseholders don't know of that requirement. I think the government could do an awful lot to publicise that and think about that immediately. Um, secondly, on, on, on service charge, we recommend there should be a standard format brought in um, so uh, all leaseholders know what to expect in terms of the information being given to them in, in, in a proper manner. Uh, I, I think the government could bring in some guidance on that without having to wait for uh, primary legislation. It's something we'd hope the government would look at very quickly. In terms of the Law Commission, I don't know how long it will take them to report, but the government could immediately make a decision to, to, to re ask them to produce a report. But the Law Commission made it very clear to us that currently in their budget they haven't got the resources to do that and would the need the government to offer and provide sufficient funding. The whole system of leasehold and ground rent is a racket. Yeah. And it's gone on for centuries. It yeah. was invented by aristocrats who'd stolen all the land from the monasteries in the 16th and 17th century. Mm -hmm. And it's a scandal that we and successive generations of politicians have continued to allow the thing to exist. Yeah. And funnily enough, when it came to a moment when there was a dire shortage of housing in this country, um, the, the house builders saw, saw an opportunity. And mm -hmm. no wonder we've ended up with the position we're in at the moment. Wouldn't it just be simpler to scrap the whole system? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, <coughs> 
I, I suppose the, 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 I'm yes. tempted to say yes, but what we did say in the report was we need to move to a whole new approach where common hold becomes basically the default option for flats. You can abolish it for houses, uh, and I think if you put the sorts of restrictions on ground rents and permission fees we're talking about here, there won't be any incentive for freeholders at the end, uh, and that will drive it out of the market. So I think it's, it's twofold. Stopping it on, on new properties uh, and making it uh, no incentive for, for freeholders in the future because their, their income streams, which are, are wrongly obtained now, will not in future uh, be available. Thanks. Mr Deputy Speaker, can I congratulate uh, my honourable friend and member for Sheffield South East and his committee on that excellent report. Um, I, like many other co uh, colleagues here today, I have uh, many constituents who have been affected by this terrible scandal. And the committee has rightly addressed the issue uh, about uh, the way people can get redress and get compensation. And clearly there's lots of, uh, lots of uncertainty still around us at the moment. Uh, and clearly for those who have already been hit by this, that's a big issue for them. And how do they get redress and compensation for this? Now, during his, 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 his uh, presentation, my honourable friend mentioned about he doesn't think that in terms of retrospective legislation it should in any way conflict with human rights legislation. Could he just say a bit more about that? We, we took evidence on that, and in the end, there are the caveats and conditions on human rights legislation. And if there is uh, a general good to be obtained, um, then, then that can oversee, uh, oh, 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 that can overweigh um, the particular interests of private owners of property. But the government have already got round that on enfranchisement, where they're talking about and asked the Law Commission to recommend a simple enfranchisement, which could mean that the freeholder gets less compensation when the leaseholder enfranchises. So in that case, the government is already considering reducing the value of enfranchisement to uh, freeholders. It is no different uh, to a recommendation to reduce the value of ground rents to freeholders in principle. Now, it, it probably needs further work, but, but we, we had advice that it is possible. There will be a requirement for some compensation, but it need not be full value compensation. Ruth Cuthbert. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I would also like to thank the Chair and his committee, the members for Ellesmere, Porton uh, uh, and Leston, the member for Worthing and Poplar and Limehouse, who have been raising this issue consistently uh, in this House, certainly since I've been here, and also the Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, who have been very, very helpful uh, to leaseholders and to ourselves on the legal issues. Um, and I'm really pleased to see that the report, quite rightly, um, uh, says that the balance of power is weighted against the leaseholder. Um, in the context of the modern equivalent uh, uh, of the dissolution of the monasteries and the racket that fo uh, followed that uh, the member for R that Rhonda raised, does the, uh, does the chair not agree with me that we now have uh, that what, what the, 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 the uh, uh, what we're seeing with leaseholders is a modern-day racket where developers, solicitors, finance people, many of them offshore, are deliberately running a racket and organise conference in order, conferences in order to share the knowledge, in order to rip off leaseholders. Yes, I also want to join the thanks to the Leasehold Knowledge Partnership for the work yeah. they have done as well. Uh, absolutely right. It, it, it's mis-selling houses in the first place. Then when people have got, got into a, a, a leasehold situation, it, it's giving them, a, you know, charging permission fees of ridiculous amounts for things that should, should be done anyway without the requirement of the freeholder uh, to say yes to it. It's about service charges where things have been put in are often for services that aren't, aren't delivered. Um, and uh, it, it, it's also you know, freeholders making money out of that. We heard of examples uh, of freeholders um, contracting for insurance on the property uh, and taking a cut, uh, a, a percentage uh, a contribution uh, out of the money they paid over. Now, the, 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 those things are completely wrong. So the sooner we can change this system, uh, the better. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I would so like to put on record my thanks to the Chair of Select Committee, every Select Committee member and uh, the APPG and the campaign. Many of my constituents in the Northwich and Runcorn part of uh, my constituency have been affected by, as people have rightfully said, this mis-selling scandal attached to leaseholders. One question I'd certainly like to ask the Chair is what more could the Government do and indeed the Select Committee to press the competition and markets authority to actually investigate and recommend levels of, uh, of compensation. We need action now. Yeah. 
Uh, absolutely right. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll take that up, and I think we can write directly to them as well. We obviously, government gets a copy of our report and will respond. Uh, we'll make sure the, that the CMA gets one as well uh, and, and responds to it. Because uh, you know, this is a scandal, and many people are having their, their lives blighted by, uh, by that, this whole issue. Uh, and we need to do everything we can as quickly as we can to rectify that position. Thank you. Uh, can I welcome the report as well? It is a national scandal. I mean, I think it is clear it is that. These people knew exactly what they were doing. These have been sold as financial products. And people are making a lot of money out of this, and they are preying on many people who were first-time buyers, who were keen to get into their homes. Uh, we've already heard about the lawyers that were recommended at a discount. And these people were hoodwinked. Yeah. It, it, and they are now telling me that it is difficult to sell their homes. Yes. And people yes. have told me they don't actually feel that they own those homes. Yeah. Somebody else owns their home. Yeah. 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 That's true. I recognise it, it is difficult where people have signed contracts, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do something about it. We have to sort this for existing homeowners. Yeah. 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 Uh, absolutely. We've said that we think there ought to be retrospective changes to the um, permission charges to the ground rents where they uh, are, are clearly onerous at present uh, and then the Competition Markets yes. Authority ought to look uh, at whether uh, they actually are, are enforceable those contracts because they are so unreasonable in many cases. Uh, so I think there, there are two ways we can approach that and should approach that and I'm pleased to see that the Minister has sat through this uh, on the front bench there um, because in the end uh, she is the one who is going to have to deliver a lot of these changes uh, so I think she's hearing very clearly that from across the House there is a a real demand uh, that this whole matter be addressed properly by government and the government really do implement the recommendations of the committee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matt Weston. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I just say um, my thanks. It was an honour to sit on the select committee. And, and can I just say how well chaired it has been. Uh, but also to thank the contributions clearly of the APPG and all those people who have been campaigning for so long. I myself was also a victim of uh, a leasehold many years ago. And, and found myself very much sort of in the straitjacket of the costs of those who, who own the freehold. What was quite clear through the evidence that we received is just how far reaching this is. It is a national scam that's been going on. Scam. We've scam. heard the word racket, scandal, yeah. so much, and we absolutely need, need to get to, the, to grips with this as quickly as possible. Can I just echo or just amplify one point? And that was um, when, when I realized locally in one of the estates recently built in my own constituency, where uh, recent buyers in the last two years have been told by the developer, the, the salespeople, that they wouldn't have to pay as much council tax as others because they were having to, having to pay a separate charge for their verges to be, to be looked after. And just that there is a responsibility now for local authorities to, to address this issue yeah, yeah. with those estates. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we, made, we made it very clear that, that right at the beginning there should be a clear explanation from the seller uh, as to what extra charges may be required in terms of those uh, areas of open space uh, that haven't been uh, taken over by the council for future maintenance. If they're going to be uh, managed by a private company and then a service charge, the service charge itself should be open and transparent, but also the information about it should be provided right at the beginning. Uh, and it's absolutely right. This is a scandal. I refer to the 700 pieces of written evidence, but every day, Mr Deputy Speaker, we are continuing to get leaseholders' right to us. Having seen the, uh, you know, the, 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 the sessions we've had uh, on the television, uh, having read about them uh, on the website, they are writing in saying, me too, we've been badly treated, we want something done about it. Point yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. forward to Peter Bottomley. First of all, say the House greatly welcomes the way the Chair has run this particular thing, getting in all those members who are able to uh, be here today. C can I also say that <coughs> there are many other members who are representing the 10 million people in the 5, 000, 5 million homes affected by leasehold, and that perhaps the government might consider making an oral statement on Monday or Tuesday of next week yeah. so other members can contribute, and the government may want to say that it's possible to talk about how they'll go on funding the Law Commission work and the extension recommended by the Committee. Yeah. And it can I also say, Mr. Deputy Chairman, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, forgive me, that if it weren't for the work of Sebastian O'Kelly and Martin Boyd of the Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, none of this would have happened. And I think that we ought to pay a debt to those outside this House as well as congratulating ourselves inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to say is obviously 
the honourable gentleman knows that that is not a point for him, but he certainly put it on the record. And the thanks have gone to the rightful place, because the one thing we know, I do not believe there's not a constituency in this country who's not been affected.